Hi, friends, and welcome back to the sesh. I am Kendall Ray. And I am Janelle. And we have a very spicy episode for you guys this week. Oh, yeah. Boy, oh, boy. Fully loaded. Fully fucking loaded, folks. Yep, yep. We've got some big topics to cover this week. Lots going on. What's going on? Lots popping off. We got a little liver king action going here. Hell yeah. We're so excited to talk about liver Mm -hmm. for short. Yeah. Liver for short. Yeah. Um, Yeah. This dude is, surprise, a fraud. Yeah. A (laughs) giant fraud. And I bet a lot of you guys haven't heard of him. I mean, I don't think it's like everyone has followed this story. But if you know, you know. You know. And it's... Very interesting. It I is. have been completely captivated by this whole Liver King fraud. I feel like I'm a Liver King expert. Yesterday, oh, I, Liver King expert. I'm a Liver we King have. expert. Here. Yes, please welcome your Liver King expert. I'm joined today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we have Liver King. Um, we're also going to be talking about a very serious subject: uh, mm-hmm. the Balenciaga. Yeah, holy shit! Shit show that is their horrible campaign that they launched. Yeah, absolutely. Disgusting. I mean, just unbelievable, honestly. We have a lot to go over with that. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, unfortunately, we need to talk about Kanye again because he is gotten so much worse than when we last yeah. talked about him, which was a few, like a, maybe, maybe two months ago yeah. that we last spoke on Kanye. Mm-hmm. And yeah, shit got way, way worse. Way worse. Like, worse than I, and I think most people even imagined mm-hmm. him being. Like, yeah. Like some of the craziest shit that has come out of anyone's mouth yeah. in recent times is coming out of his mouth. Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, you shouldn't be shocked because it's Kanye, but it's it's so out of left field yeah. that like it is even shocking. for him, it's mm-hmm. a little like, wait, mm-hmm. you really said that? Yeah. So anyways, yep. before so, we get all into that though, we need to thank our sponsors. Oh yeah. Who do we got today? Stamps. Hello Fresh and Manscaped. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Um also we have new merchandise, folks. Oh, yeah, we do. Oh, I'm so excited for this collection. You this guys. collection is so good. Okay, I loved our last collection. Don't get me wrong, but this mm. collection I love even more, which Topped I feel like it. that's how it's supposed Topped to go, it. right? Which, unfortunately, Sydney's not here today. Yeah. She's busy. We've got a bunch of projects going on right now. Like, we're doing some big, making some big moves here. Big and, moves. Um, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> for baby. the new year. And so she's caught up with that and just couldn't take the time to be on the show with us today. Yeah. We do have Corelli, who is a trooper Woo! and is here, even though she is still sick. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Thank She's you for joining time. us. We yeah. love you. Of course. I wouldn't miss this episode for the world. I'm very excited about this episode. Yeah, <laughs> we've got we've got a lot of spicy spice to yes. go around here. But yeah, our set our sesh merch, you guys. We are so freaking yes. excited about Sydney this. Sydney put in so much work into this collection and we all have been, you know, collabing on it for mm-hmm. a while now. We really um take quite a bit of time before merch comes out now to really hone in on what we want yeah. each piece to look like. Literally, we, you know, who knew that designing merch took so long, to be honest. Like, oh, yeah. It's a it's lot more insane. than you think. <laughs> but anyways, we have several new pieces that we came out with that we are so excited about. Mm-hmm. They're so freaking cute. Um, we'll put them on the screen. If you're listening, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and like describe every one, I would assume. Yeah, not each one, but can we describe the faves? Y- yeah. Okay. First off, folks, you know that we have a passion for pickles up mm-hmm. in this bitch. Mm-hmm. So you know we had to make a pickle passion shirt, baby. That's right, bitch. We actually <laughs> made pickle merch. This is the cutest shit ever. It, yeah, it seriously turned out so good. And it's you guys know so we live for pickles and it's about time that we have pickle merch. Honestly, mm-hmm. I'm surprised it took us this long, mm-hmm. but you guys were really requesting it when over the summer, my pickle addiction was out of control during mm-hmm. my pregnancy. Delicious. <laughs> but yeah, so the front of it, it's a white uh, long sleeve tee. The front of it is this really cute little pink and green pickle jar. It says the sesh on it. I'm obsessed with this design. Oh my God, it's so cute. And then the back of it is two dancing pickles and they have like little high top sneakers on. They have little headphones and there's a little disco ball you guys seriously have to go on the site and look like it's the cutest shit ever yeah it it turned out so so good so cute we also have this really cool we're calling it the flower power crew neck Mm -hmm. um it's got very like 70s hippie vibes we got a little bus going we Mm -hmm. got flowers we got a little melting popsicle a sun so cute it's a little collage of all different stuff and it's very colorful very cute Mm -hmm. and it's on a crew neck Um, We also have a, we've never put our logo on anything, so we decided we needed to do that. Yeah, you'd think we would have done that by Mm -hmm. now, too. 
Yeah, we got a crew neck that says keep it fresh and tiny little um, wording on the front. And then on mm-hmm. the back, it has our logo with like our colors behind yeah, it. Kind of similar to our sign here. Yes. So cute. And then we also have a sesh um, ticket. We're calling it Admit One. And it's really cute. We worked really hard to get all the little details on it, right? So yeah. you'll have to check it out and like read about <laughs> it on the little ticket. But it's so cute. It has little like um, stars and clouds and happy faces. And- yeah, it turned out so good. We can't wait to see you guys in these ones. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I think this time around, we should encourage people to send in photos so we can actually see it on you guys. And <gasps> yeah, we can feature them on our show. On the show. That's what I'm thinking. Like, yes. You know, great if you buy idea. some merch, take some pictures, send them to us. We'll have instructions about how to do that. I don't know Ta- how is best. I think probably Maybe just tag tagging the us. Sesh. Tag the underscore sesh podcast on Instagram. Yeah. Um, But use it. Do the grid post because if it's on a story, we might miss it. True. Yeah. Good point. So grid post only. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and tag us. Yeah. Obviously, like you can tag us in stories too and we'll still repost you guys. But if you want to be on yep. our show, mm-hmm. then yeah, tag us on a grid post. Um, but yeah, this stuff is so cute. We're really excited yeah. about it. And I love this collection as for an, all the shows. It's so good. Yeah, it's really cute. Um, and then as an added bonus, we just wanted to mention that we were able to do some stuff behind the scenes mm-hmm. and lower our prices. Yep. And we really worked exciting. really hard to make that happen. So. Yeah. I hope you guys appreciate that. Yes. But yeah, head on over. It's a tricky, all the math of everything. Oh, yeah. And I'm not a mathematician. No. Are you, Kendall? Definitely not. (laughs) Definitely not. So, So. yeah. Head on over to milehiremerch.com to get that. Um, And again, big shout out to Sydney for working on this collection. And she put in time on all the collections for all the shows. Which right now. more stuff coming out too next year. Exactly. Yeah. We have launched Mile Higher and Sesh first. And then we're going to be launching Lights Out and Kendall's channel. Mm Mm-hmm come the new year we wanted to kind of stagger them and not just like bombard you guys with yeah. tons of new stuff so yeah mm-hmm. that's pretty much it i'm so excited me oh, too also do you want to mention um our neck mech campaign yes right now mile higher media is matching donations to national center for missing and exploited children and so far you guys have been donating you know from other shows i don't think we've announced it here we yet have not. but um, I'm sure there's a lot of crossover and we've already gotten some really amazing, super generous donations that we're really excited about. So we're we have a goal of hitting 100,000 by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we are matching dollar for dollar. Up so to 50,000. Yes, up to 50,000. So take advantage of that. Um, but you've got to donate through our specific link, yes. which will be below. Yep. Or else we can't track it, obviously. Right. Um. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really I forgot. Stuff. I got you a little Christmas present. <gasps> I was supposed to give it to you last week, and then I sucked and forgot. Do you have it here? Yeah, but it's in my office. Should I go get it? Yeah, go get it. Okay, it's just little. Yay. All right, I'm here with my giant bag. Woo, bag of tricks. What you got for us? Diapers. Hell yeah. (laughs) Merry Christmas. What's in my bag? What's in my bag? (laughs) Okay, so two things you love in life, especially around this time of year, beanies and the Grinch. (gasps) Look what I find. Shut up. Up. Where did you get that? <laughs> American Eagle. Oh my God, it's so soft. This is adorable. Guys, look. I just knew you had to have it. <laughs> How fun is that? Jill loves a good beanie hat. I love beanies. They're so cute. I can't wear other hats. Oh, that's like a so cute on you. I love Richie. that. That's so good. It's so cute. I would wear it, but for some reason, I'm really like hot today. So yeah, I'll say, be sweating my balls like off. Wear it. <laughs> but it's so cute. Thanks for thinking of me. You're welcome. So cozy. I know it's fun. I love that. Thing. It's very cute. Okay. Well, it. let's move on here. We've got so okay. much to get yeah. into, guys. <sighs> okay. Here we are. Let's all take a dip. Let's like breathe for a second. <gasps> breathe in. Hold for four seconds. Two, three, four. Breathe out. <sighs> That's nice. We should do that for all shows. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. nice. The audience should join us. I mean, yeah. You know, you really can never have enough breath. <laughs> Isn't that right? That is correct. We need oxygen here in this bitch. (laughs) Okay. All right. So if you are not familiar Mm -hmm. with Mr. Liver King. Wow. What a character. Oh, Oh my God. 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 You scared the shit out of me. (laughs) So I had never heard of this guy. I mean, he actually just kind of came on the scene in the last year. Mm -hmm. But Josh showed him to me like two months ago. And I have found him to be so interesting. Just the whole liver king he's like a big character right yes so this guy he's like looks like dave the barbarian 
and he Someone said is he looks, or on age they said that he looked like the king uh burger king <laughs> like he king. Oh, the, king. the king yeah he totally does <laughs> he was like low-key not pleased with that it was so funny though dude yeah he is a very interesting character and he refers to his followers and people like him as primals mm-hmm. and people who are weak as sub primals yes. That's that's right. So let's get a little montage going here so we have an idea of who Liver King really is. Correct. I just broke my 24-hour fast by doing a simulated successful hunt, and now it is time to feast. Here's what we get to have. <laughs> Three ounces of liver. We got a couple ounces of pure marrow that we're going to scoop right out of this femur. We got Ew. 10 ounces of some bone and skin on sardines. Three ounces of some fresh sashimi-style testicle. Ew. We have our vegetables. <laughs> We have a huge chunk, a huge pile of carbs. We got some liver king concoction in here with some grass finished yogurt and maple syrup. And last but not least, here are my good friends, my condiments, my farm fresh fermented ketchup, my maple syrup, and my olive oil. Oh, yeah. This is what liver king gets to eat today. I'm going for the testicles right away because. They don't taste that great. So basically, he's eat, <laughs> he eats raw for meat. And for this is what Liver King does a lot of is like, having for I'm dinner today. Of course, I'm mm-hmm. starting with liver with breakfast, lunch, and dinner because liver is king. I got my bone marrow right here with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The whole beast is always going to have a whole beast protein shake. I got a pound of fresh ground ribeye. I got four fresh fertilized egg yolks. Hell I got some yeah. protein. I got some more chicken liver. Liver on top of liver. I got my pork rind salad. I got my key <laughs> right here with some raw testicle in it. And I got the mm. hormone optimizing alpha little organizer. Promo there. Your ass yeah, he's alive. always promoting liver his king little with the king is product. Today, liver king. His Out. little product. <laughs> so he also does like my job, my <laughs> job is astro to astro Mars. the ancestral lifestyle to model to market, teaching, right? To to market to what? market like your shit. It's 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 to market this lifestyle. Yeah, right. Because people are fucking hurting today. Most people live a life that fucking sucks. Oh, shut right? up. And there's bro. a life that you guys know about that's goddamn worth living. And there's a simple, elegant solution in doing it. It doesn't cost a fucking pity. You can start doing it. To, you start eating liver. You start lifting heavy shit. So you, liver is just the cure to everything. Well, I'll, I'll, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say yes. I'm okay. going to say yes. I don't actually believe that. But, yes. you know, it, it, it's the whole fucking way of living. Like, there's nine ancestral tenants. Eat is one of the tenants. And li- eating liver is just one sub. So he's been one, on one tons subset. of different podcasts. So you were doing this before you went viral, right? Like, doing I've been, all this I've been doing this for a long fucking How long? time. Yeah. 15 years. So um, do, do you use toothpaste? No. <laughs> Our early ancestors didn't brush, didn't floss, you brush? didn't get cavities. Do you brush? I don't use toothpaste. I don't brush. I don't floss. You don't even deal with the mouth. And sick. I don't get cavities. That is so sick. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Wow. And <laughs> and um, do you... Um... I think I'm going to do a disservice to your listeners if I don't just at least tell them this. If you don't want to get cavities, get the fat-soluble system. Now right? You need vitamin A, D, K, and E. In other words, you need to eat liver, bone marrow, egg yolks, get sun. It's a one-stop shop. Liver is just helping everything. Oh, I know yeah. what I want. Well, I, know, I know about this stuff. And you have to mechanically load the teeth. I know about so this stuff. So if you're stuff. eating baby food, if you're eating stuff where you're not mechanically loading, the, then you're, you're still going to have oral health issues. So oh, you need yeah. to mechanically load. He's a dentist, and you need too. That, yeah, that, he's uh, dentist. That kind of nutrition. Mm-hmm. So, okay, basically, if you Very interesting. get the gist, he's mm-hmm. like all about ancestral living, which is, you know, yes. nowadays... Taco Bell, for instance, is not yeah. ancestral. <laughs> to him, showers apparently right. are not. And apparently this dude smells so yeah. bad. Like the worst smelling smell. <laughs> After he was on H3, their crew was talking about how they think he literally just sprayed fart spray all over himself because it was that <laughs> bad. And they're like, it's not possible for him to smell that awful from not showering. But this guy doesn't shower. No. He sleeps on a wood bed. He literally has this big wood plank yeah. with a comforter on top of it. Yeah. And his wife does that too. Mm-hmm. So he's got his wife who is the liver queen mm-hmm. and he's got two boys or actually I don't know if he's ever specified how many boys. He just says my boys. Two, I'm pretty sure. I was uh, watching this thing yesterday yeah. and there was two of them. That's what I thought too. So maybe, yeah. Anyway, he's got liver boys. Liver boys! <laughs> and Which he calls them savage. Savage. Liver boys. Liver boys. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. And he refers to himself as primal. So yeah, his whole thing is like raw you know, mm-hmm. old school, I guess you could say in a way, like not, he doesn't, like we said, doesn't brush his teeth. Yep. Uh, Basically, you need to live like oh, a caveman. He doesn't wipe his ass. 
Oh, right. He just lets, he just gives a he, little pinch. And he's like, I can Excuse tell. Excuse me? I can feel yeah. if it's like a he good poop or not. And if it crispy. is, and there's no reason to yeah. wipe your asshole. Crispy yep. poops. Yeah. <laughs> it's just no. Yeah. So he doesn't wipe his ass, which is I'm like, dude, that's probably why you smell so bad. Isn't that like an infection waiting to happen in your asshole? Could be. But he says you don't need to if you can. If you're primal. If, if you feel your poop is like a specific consistency, then there's no residue left. He's like, if it's crazy, I'll it check. Just, yep, if it feels yep. wrong, then I'll check it out. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. 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 So he basically wants people to live this, you know, original way to get more sunshine, more time outside, to eat raw things, less less of the modern. Nothing processed. Everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, he's very hardcore about this way of life. Mm-hmm. Um, but the big thing here about him is he's always claimed that he does not take any steroids, that he has gotten this insane physique, which mm-hmm. it's been like highly debated whether or not he even has like implants. Cause I mean, it's so crazy. He's so huge. He's huge. Um, but he claims that that's all because he lives this alternative lifestyle that no one else is really doing. And so he kind of has a leg up on everyone else because two he's workouts all these a raw day, things. two workouts a day, even on his day off, he, yep. he walks like an insane amount which I think he, I mean, he actually does do all of these yeah. workouts and everything. It's not all a fraud, but mm-hmm. a big part of it ended up coming out. Well, let's, let's watch this one clip of him talking about, because I mean, obviously every podcast he goes on, people are like, dude, you're fucking huge. Yeah. Are you on performance enhancing drugs? And he says, no, yeah, nope. He's denied a million times. And I think that's a reason why, you know, so many people have believed him right. is because he was so confident in his lies. Like he was so gung ho. Oh, yeah. I don't touch the stuff. It's, you know, just so beyond it. So, so above beyond. it. Um, so we, do we have a clip yes, of that? We okay. Do. So let's see him on other podcasts denying the use of, PEDs. of steroids. PEDs. What is a performance for? enhancing drugs? Oh, thanks. Okay. Yeah. I'm new to this whole world. So whether you use stuff or not, like, I don't. Can they get a build like yours without taking them? So I want to set the record straight. I want to expand and tell you why it's possible. A, a year ago, maybe two years ago, it was all about like PEDs and steroids, mm-hmm. right? And, and, and then, you know, same question, same answer. I didn't touch the stuff. Don't touch the stuff, right? Joe Rogan criticized you. Joe Rogan's a big person in yeah. terms of his platform. Yeah. Big. How did that feel when he said he alluded that you're on steroids or something like that? Yeah. Number one, I don't do it. And number two, what I want you to say is, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that guy, in fact, he did say he's in the 0.00001% of genetics if he does it naturally. What is the liver king's response to this claim that the liver king is hormonally And this one is recent, Mm -hmm. like within the last month. The question has always been, do you take steroids? Do you take PEDs? The answer to that is no. I've always told the truth. I still tell the truth. Uh This is funny. People write in DMs. Right. They're like, uh, they tell me what I'm taking. Right. And, and then here's the, here's something else. I was just joking around. I'd like to get your opinion on this. You know, I thought. So again, for the record, I've never taken steroids. Really, I'm thinking about <laughs> doing it. Yeah. Ancestral tenant ten is have a little fucking fun. Right. And I'm steroids like, you know are what? fun. <laughs> no, I don't. Built this biological right. resilience. I always say, ha- have a little poison. I, I, oh, I'll yeah. drink, I'll do mushrooms, I'll do shit like every Saturday I imbibe. I'm like, you know what? I'm healthy enough. <laughs> if I want to do a cycle, to steroids. I'm do a cycle. <laughs> and how much you want to bet I turn into the incredible fucking Hulk? You're going to be terrified. I, I want to be like this. Okay, you, you think this guy's on steroids, right? This is the guy who's on steroids. So I think when people see someone with your, with your physique, uh, they just they look at it and they think there's something going on here. There's gear, there's steroids, there's performance enhancing drugs. Talk to us about, you know, whether you use performance enhancing drugs or steroids or anything to get this physique. Listen, I love this question. I've been getting this question since high school Bro. and it's done more to lift the Liver King brand and message than any other question. Dude, that's so a I hope you're asking it now continues right now. to do the same. The short answer is no. I know. I don't touch the stuff. He loves that question because it helps his business. So you're Which, admitting you're, all you're, your marketing is just fraudulent. Mm-hmm. You're lying to people. And openly saying that it's helping your business. It's crazy. And which, by the way, he is the CEO of four separate businesses that all offer pretty much the same thing. They all sell and market supplements and protein powders that promise to get you fucking jacked like him. And he claims to make over 100 million a year. That's insane. Yeah. That I is- mean, this dude's fucking got zillions. Of- the dude has a private chef that comes in every day. Yep. His house is huge. He flies on private jets. He also had a crew. When he decided he was going to make this whole Liver King brand, 
he invited a whole film crew to come mm -hmm. live on his property with him and film everything he does. And then they had this whole plan to make it this big viral thing. Because again, like two years ago or a year and a half ago, he wasn't a thing. This didn't exist. He wasn't exist, like a public huge. platform. Stuffing your stockings with everything the man in your life could ask for. That's right. This holiday season, Manscaped has vowed to make sure his ornaments are shining bright and his tree is standing tall. Wow, that's good. Spice up his stocking with gifts he'll actually use and something that you can enjoy too. If you don't believe in Santa, you'd better believe in this. They've changed 7 million men for the better. Men are hard to shop for and Manscaped can make it so much easier. Manscaped's best-selling product is the Performance Package 4.0, which is at the top of every man's wish list this year. Inside, you'll find their lawnmower body trimmer. Dare I say, it is the best trimmer on the market for his balls, back, chest, the list goes on. And the Weed Whacker ear and nose trimmer. And let's not forget their famous liquid formulations, the Crop Preserver, which is ball deodorant, and Crop Reviver, which is ball toner, which will keep him smelling nice down there. And did I mention, these are a perfect fit for any stocking. And all their formulations are vegan, cruelty-free, dye-free, sulfate-free, paraben-free, so you know that his manhood is in good hands. And make sure and hurry to get to their site to make sure that all these wild gifts show up before the holiday season. And while you're at it, you can get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code SESH. Whether this is for your partner, brother, dad, friend, get them something that they will actually use and is almost sure to get a laugh. After all, who doesn't like opening ball deodorant? Get 20% off and free shipping at manscaped.com with code SESH. Cheers to rocking the best gifts of all this season. A gift for him, but really a gift for you. XOXO Manscaped. But anyways, basically, he's just primal as fuck. Yes, his, his website liver says, king. Liver King has dedicated the past 20 years to reviving the primal patterns that progressed the sole surviving species of genius homo. Liver King is an evolutionary hunter, a serial entrepreneur by nature, with a singular focus to honor our ancestors, to teach, preach, and model the ancestral message so it becomes mainstream, so that primals don't have to suffer and struggle unnecessarily. Hmm. Huge heart, this guy. <laughs> ancestral living was discovered not out of choice, but necessity. At the roots of today's suffering, therein lies tremendous friction between modern environments and our biology. Our ancestors had it right. Many years before us, they identified a simple, elegant way of living that enabled us to genetically express the highest versions of ourselves. Hell yeah. Liver is king. And he also eats a lot of other, you know. He eats like mm -hmm, interesting stuff. Bone balls. marrow, uh, chicken hearts, turkey hearts, bull balls, and weans too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And because they have good nutritional benefits. Which... Do believe that to be true, but his whole the liver is actually very good for yeah. you. I think his From whole thing, though. It, well, I don't know how much like he. That's like all he eats. So again, I mean, we're not health we're experts definitely, over here, mm -hmm. but I would have to assume that eating that much red meat every single day. I think a lot of people would argue is not good for you, but that's yeah, a topic for that's a different just day. a different argument. But yeah. yeah, liver in general is supposed to have something in it that can really be good for you. Wow. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> I really don't understand this, but oh um, I guess there are like quite a few people who try to incorporate liver into your diet and it can be really good for you. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what he's really built all of this on. Um, he also liver is key. <laughs> that's right. And liver also lives by the nine ancestral tenets, mm -hmm. which include sleep. So um, improving the quality of sleep by winding down early in the evening Eating your last meal several hours before you go to bed and ditching your phone too. Mm -hmm, I think everyone mm -hmm. can agree th those are good things. Eat. Meanwhile, I sit in my bed eating crackers t and on my phone until I fall asleep. <laughs> I used to do that. I've like tried to just stop eating at like seven or eight. It's smart. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, the other one is eat. Remove processed foods. Seed oils. That's been what, something he's really driven home, the seed oil thing, which and is a soy. huge topic of conversation in like the you health, know, health community. Um, and also take liquid calories from your diet. He also says to move. Liver takes three 30-minute walks every day. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, he walks with his wife. 
uh, shield, protect ourselves from modern dangers such as Wi-Fi, fluoride, seed oils. Dangers like these end up compounding with an ad- and have an addictive effect. Mm. They disrupt our hormones, metabolism, and ability to get sleep. Connect. Take your shoes off. This is something mm-hmm. he always talks about. Take your shoes off next time you go to the, on a walk and connect with the, with earth. the earth. Which I also like believe. I think yeah. there's something you said of like, you He's know, got walking. Some good things yeah, in here. for sure. I mean, a lot of what he says, I think people resonate with. And mm-hmm. so I think that's why he was so likable because, yeah. you know, whether or not you're eating raw liver every day, okay, whatever. But a lot of the stuff he says is like, you know, move. It's important to mm-hmm. move your body every mm-hmm. day. It's important to you know, be get sunlight. It's important to put yeah. your feet on the ground and get you back know. to your roots mm-hmm. a little bit. Um, I understand kind of the ancestral way of life, but he just, of course, takes it to such, oh, an, yeah. He's extreme. such an extreme. Yeah. yeah. Um, cold. He likes to use ice baths, jumps mm-hmm. into cold rivers and lakes. That sounds horrible. Even just taking a cold shower because liver says we should expose ourselves to cold environments to help blood circulation and build resilience to stress. Um, he also says sun, which we all know, sunshine, vitamin D, right. very good for us. He uses no sunscreen. Right. Which, which is interesting. There's like people that argue that sunscreen, like modern day sunscreen can mess with your hormones and your mm. endocrine system and stuff. So that's why. I think Again, that. not pushing any. That's just what yeah, people we're say. We're just relaying the info. We don't know here. Yeah. Um, as far as I know, sunscreen is good for you. <laughs> I use it. I uh, use yep. it at least on my face every single yeah, day. Yeah, try not to age as much, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, fight. That's the eighth here he doesn't expect us to pick a fight with the next guy we see walking but he we should set goals and aspiration once we achieve them we were whatever so you want to get in a fight <laughs> yeah, sounds like go. it'd be good for us mm-hmm. to physically fight mm-hmm. Crowley we'll can, them, we'll revo- the too. yeah oh, mm-hmm. i guess well i guess i also need to be um you know i also need to let it let it go so maybe i'll fight too i'll fight yeah. you yeah okay okay how <laughs> yeah let's go charlie wants to fight bitch this guy couldn't fight a fucking moth pow pow He's extremely primal. Tenets. This guy's primal. Oh, yeah, as fuck. he is super primal. You don't want to run into him in a dark alley, that's for sure. He says, I'm primal as fuck, bitch. Okay. Also, the <laughs> last one he says is bond, um, which is referring to our purpose and how ancestors made it their purpose to protect those around them by building shelter and hunting for food. Um, he says, today we no longer need to worry about these things as much, but we should put away our phones and spend time with our loved ones and friends. I think we can all agree that that's right. a fucking good tenant. Um, and then he also has this 10th one. He like sometimes says that fun, like we just right. heard him say fun, you know, therefore it's fun to do steroids. And yeah, he was like, that's why I might have do a good it. time. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Um, yeah, he's been on all these podcasts and has been so sure, you know, really driving home the fact that everyone's stupid for thinking I'm on steroids and I'm definitely, definitely, Has definitely never not. ever done them. Never touched them. What never are they? Never touched them. Yep. yep. Steroid who? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he says, says he's all natty. Yes. That's all the big, natty. Yep. Isn't that? That's the terminology. All natty, baby. Natty or not natty? Um, I'm so, not. Yeah. I'm natty. So, you're natty? You're all natty? <laughs> um, that was no, me. I'm oh, not. Was so you. natty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not natty. I got eyelashes, extensions. Oh, shit. Yeah, I guess I'm kind of not natty either then. Sorry. Anyway, turns out the dude is on hella roids. Like, (laughs) a lot, you guys. Like, a fucking lot. Yeah. Like, way more than the average roid user. Even more than professional bodybuilders or like bodybuilders. Yeah. 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 Like, and again, forgive us. We are not experts on this whole (laughs) conversation here. Actually, we're going to be starting a health podcast. No, we really do. And I don't know like anything about steroids. I don't understand it. No. It's, yeah. But um, all I know is, yeah, he definitely has looked like he's on steroids. I think even like the average person like us can tell like that fucker is on steroids. Totally. Well, for sure. And John was kind of explaining it to me. He's like, obviously, the dude is ripped and chiseled. That's one thing. He's like, but really, I think <clears throat> what you can how you can tell someone's on performance enhancing drugs is by their veins. Like yes. people don't naturally just have their veins popping out. Like yeah. so many of them. The dude is ripped as fuck, but he also has like his veins just like popping out. Yeah. And I think that's supposedly one way that kind of like you can tell gives it away a little. Yeah. You can also tell, I think, by the redness in the totally. skin. Totally. You know, he's yeah, really he's red. like red looking and um <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's also in the sun, doesn't wear sunscreen. So that's, that's true. Why. That's I don't true. Know. 
Um, but yeah, just also the like mood swings and like mm. intense energy, mm-hmm. like amped all the time. Yeah, you can kind of just tell. Also, so, uh, steroids called shrink. They cause shrinkage, like oh, major shrinkage of your wiener, of your weenie. Oh. Yep. Oh, so he probably no. has like poor a liver bitty- queen. <laughs> poor liver queen. Yeah. Um, so you think he's got a small ween? This yeah, is alleged. Could. Don't alleged. come after us. We don't know. Maybe your ween's giant. I don't know. <laughs> That's a big sacrifice to make for some roids. That's why I always like was always like so confused at like people who use roids. Like yeah. you're, you're really sacrificing oh. your peen for big your- on the outside, but when you open the package, it's you know, little on the package. <laughs> yep. We pop anyway. <laughs> Not to shame small weens. Yeah, we love no. all weens. We love all weens. <laughs> Support all the weens. Support all weens. Okay, so how this all came to happen is weightlifting YouTuber, more dates, more plates, which this guy's pretty interesting. His name is Derek. I mean, I'm obviously not watching like fitness bodybuilding material, um, but yeah, I, I kind of like this guy. No. He seems interesting. I've watched a few of his things now. And he posted a video last week sharing emails sent from Liver to a bodybuilding coach, which, by the way, Liver's name is actually Brian Johnson. Just yeah, to clarify, I I'd never said that. <laughs> What's his real name now? Um, but he sent this bodybuilding coach an email, and he asks for advice to enhance his steroid cycle. And this is an old email that resurfaced. I think, I don't know exactly how he got his hands on it, but it is legitimate. And I mean, now he's admitted to it, so we know that it's true. And this guy, more dates, more plates. Derek posted a video called The Liver King Lie. The video is like an hour long and it details all of the past allegations against liver, including the steroid use. And also so many people are very sus that he has ab implants. So he kind of talks about that. I don't know. I guess that's still. Yeah, I don't think that's been confirmed. Remain to be debated at this point. Yeah. Derek actually just went on Joe Rogan and they were kind of talking about it. Um, They don't think Unless it was good surgery, it doesn't look like ab implants, I guess, which I'm like, I don't, I don't really know. know what ab implants look like, to be honest. But they were like, if he does have that, it's probably really well done. Hmm. Okay. They, they look like they could be real. Okay. So here's his true secret to being massive. Homie takes 16 vials a month, five of which were steroids and one is a synthetic protein hormone. And in the emails, he specified that he was spending about eleven thousand dollars <laughs> per month on all his steroids and drugs. That is uh one hundred and thirty two thousand dollars a year at least. Holy balls. That is crazy. <sighs> yeah. Oh, wow. But yeah. I mean, think of how much he's made off of it. Oh, yeah. It's like worth the investment. Totally. For him, especially when you're living online. Should we right? read a little bit of his email here? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. It's pretty interesting. Honestly, I kind of think we should read it all. I know it's a lot, but... Yeah, I think we should read it all. You it's wanna, pretty fascinating. Want to take turns reading? Yeah, let's let's do a little take turns. Okay. <laughs> so first, he kind of opens with this paragraph. He's just talking about what yeah. He's trying to figure out like what times he can meet with this yeah, dude. Yeah, we don't discuss. need to read it. It's honestly it's weird. He's like, I can do 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., yeah. but it's 6 p.m., 7 p.m., yeah. your time. Like, It's like, dude... Just say a weird. time. Check <laughs> my math on that. Like the energy this guy has. He's like, yeah, he's on, crazy. I think people who are on yep. that plus that many steroids, like you yeah, gotta he's be fucking like, amped all the time. Whoa, he's lit as fuck. Okay. So anyways, he says, as relates to my goals, I'm the face of several brands, including Ancestral Supplements, and I've hired a team to build a Liver King brand with my goal of 1 million followers by March 2022. Find you, this um, was from June 29th, 2021, um, mm-hmm. when this email was being sent. So that's a, yeah, not even a full year he was giving himself to get to that. Yeah. Point. And he, I believe, reached that goal like way before that. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. So mm-hmm. he goes, I'm pouring ridiculous resources into making this happen, including hosting a video guy that will be living at my guest house and a film crew that will be filming seven days a month. I have to stay in Oh, seven great- days a month. Correction. I said earlier, every day. I every thought day. it was every day, seven days a week. It's actually seven a month. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Um, he says, I have to stay in great fucking shape year round. Maybe take one to two months off a year. Here's a clip where I'm currently at, blah, blah, blah. He says, I've been working out for 35 years. I know how to eat, train, rest, and recover. I even have a hard shell hyperbaric chamber at my house. Don't know what the fuck that is. But as I've reached my mid 40s, it's getting harder. And the back fat fucking kills me. To this support is so these- <laughs> interesting. He's obsessed with his back fat. Yeah. It's to like, support these what? exhaustive efforts, I recently started taking Omnitrope. Omnitrope. Thank you, ma'am. 
Uh, the 5.8 milligram vials from Empower Pharmacy, uh, 11,000 USD per month for my new dose, which is four vials for a week, blah, blah, blah. Um, I don't know if this shit is grossly underdosed or what, but I have been taking two vials per week and my IGF one is only at 139, which I guess is low. See, this, I don't know about that. Yeah. He says, my doctor told me that I could double it in an effort to get it to the upper 200s, low 300s. Uh, she thinks I could be a, a hyper non-responder. Um, I'm wondering if I, if taking a fuckload of other peptides could be co-founding the result and possibly interfering with e efficacy. Um, for instance, here's what I'm currently taking. He like lists off six different drugs that he's taking, um, which I don't know anything about them, but <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm sure you guys don't really care yeah, that much. Exactly. Um, he says, my blood sugar every morning is around 74 and insulin are great because I'm metabolically fit as fuck or so I think. Some, like <laughs> he says fuck a lot, which yeah, no judgment. I mean, so do I. Mean, I. We love it. It's but. so funny. Um, some docs think my insulin is too low, but I think it's because I'm very insulin sensitive because I work out like a fucking maniac, i.e. train twice a day, six days a week and walk 10 to 12 miles on my rest day. That's his rest day, 10 to 12 miles. Yeah. <sighs> Oh my God. Uh, can you help me dial in the PED and growth hormone protocol to maximize results? Um, you will see that my labs are healthy. Back on 512, look pretty good. My recent labs show some serious concerns, probably the Winstrol, but we're just continuing that in two weeks, anyways. Other than that, I feel pretty good. Whatever he said, my joints, mm -hmm. aside from my joints, I feel pretty good. I'm 5'7, 43 years old. 5'7. Mm, so, uh, He's short like, king. That's, yeah. that's cute. Yeah. That's cute. He's about my height. Or wait, what am I? Yeah, he's like maybe an inch taller than me. You're five seven. No, I'm five six five. Yeah, five and a half. I give myself five and a half. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Very good. Also, I found some. Sorry to interrupt, but I okay. found some. Um, oh, ab implant. Pictures. Oh, I saw you were looking at that. Very wow, good. Wow, that's crazy different. So wait, I'm... that kind of looks like him, though. I mean, well, yeah. not him, but yeah, 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 like what he has. Damn, that's crazy. That's just like not even real. Yeah, muscle. what? Those look so fake. But the, yeah. Okay, yeah, Whoa. that one looks really, really fake. This, yeah, that one looks like it's drawn on. No offense to metamorphosis. Are they what are silicone, just like breast implants? Or like, what are I they? I don't know. Wow. Some of them look good. That one looks good. Yeah. Wow. That is What a difference. Amazing. Holy shit. Damn. Wow. <sighs> Yeah, yeah, he definitely could be. Could. I mean, if he got him done, though, it sounds like he did had a good surgeon or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so obviously that email was a big smoking gun and Liver King was totally fucked after that and had no choice but to admit that, yep, Pepper. I am on the roids and I've been lying. <laughs> lying. Lying King. Lying, lying King. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, pretty wild. Um, then also there was an email that went out with his daily schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just kind of interesting. So we wanted to read that. So he wakes up at 6 a.m., works out between 7 and 1 p.m. Oh, his two different workouts, 7, 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. Beautiful. I always train fasted. If I'm not going to my ranch, I don't leave my compound. I live on, I don't know, this is cut off 15 acres, it looks like, um, on the lake and have everyone come to me. My ranch is 500 acres of paradise. Oh, so 500 acres. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. He lives on a lot of land. Yeah. I don't go out to eat. I don't go bowling. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> random. Uh, I don't go to the movies. This is my routine. Oh, so. by the way, the dude literally never wears a shirt. Yeah, he's been ever. like ever. He's been asked on podcasts like when he wears a shirt. And he's like, well, I don't go places that require me to wear a shirt. He owns like 12 shirts or something. Don't you wonder how many of these things like the little, you know, little fun things he comes up with are actually True. made up during this whole liver king process? Yeah. Or like how much of it was he actually living for 15 years? Right. She claims he's been living like this for so long. Did he really never wear a shirt or were, was his marketing team like, dude, you should never wear a shirt? He's like, oh, brill. He's like, I'm Tarzan, yeah. bitch. <laughs> okay, so 6 a.m., he wakes up. He walks to the lake barefoot. Got to connect. Um, sun gazes and has morning coffee and reviews the books for my company. Um, then our companies, multiple mm -hmm. of four. Mm -hmm. 7 a.m., workout number one. I follow Westside Conjugate. Conjugate? Conjugate. Sure. I don't know. And customize the program as needed. I take the first dose of Omnitrope right before this workout. Then he has a 9 a.m. meal. 
which is one 45 gram protein shake with cold mineral water, 60 grams of dextrose, 100 grams of whole Greek yogurt, 30 grams of maple syrup, four farm fresh eggs, five grams of creatine, collagen, almond butter, ghee, Redmond salt, and red meat. Mm-hmm. Um, then one fifteen to nine. I can't imagine living on a schedule like this. Honestly, props oh. to anyone who does like a minute by minute schedule. Seriously, like this. Mm-hmm. crazy. Um, nine fifteen to one p.m. meetings or nine fifteen to one p.m. Mm. That's long. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Meetings and phone calls with the occasional nap from twelve to one. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> nice. One thirty p.m. workout number two. This is Olympic lifting <laughs> skills and Melcon. Metcon. Met- oh, I don't thank know what you. Metcon is. Metcon. I take the second dose of Omnichoke right before this workout. 2.30 p.m. He eats his meal number two. It's like all the Another same Another protein shit. shake, more cold mineral water. Same old, same old, same old. Salt, meat, Yep, raw but this bone, time he marrow. adds raw liver and raw bone marrow, yeah. 3 to 4.30, meetings and phone calls. 4.30, eat meal number three. Full fat red meat, 12 ounces. Uh, ribeye, ground wagyu, or short ribs. And then 100 to 200 grams of of sweet potatoes then from 5 30 6 30 he does phone calls emails and meetings 6 30 to 7 he walks with his wife 7 to 7 30 emails again 7 30 to 8 30 he spends time with his liver boys and they normally go to the theater room and watch a marvel movie and play games which is kind of confusing 7 30 to 8 30 there's no marvel movie that you could fit into that time maybe he just watches like part of it yeah, well, it's just, <laughs> just like we watch it in like chunks. Yeah. Well, they, they were watching, watching the like first two half times Shrek. Speed. Yeah. <laughs> first half Shrek. And then 8 30. Um, did I say Shrek? I definitely meant the yeah. Hulk. Shrek. <laughs> I was like, okay, Shrek Brandon, but okay. Okay. Same thing, whatever. Um, 8 30, I take the third tros of, dose of Omnitrope, mm. wait 30 minutes, and have a 30 gram protein shake, two ounces of red meat, and get ready for bed. Nice bedtime snack. 9 p.m. bedtime. This just gives me 4 o'clock while in self-pity. 4.30. <laughs> <Totally. laughs> yes, very much so. Oh, can you do that again with the, the hat on? Yes. <laughs> Ow. That hurt. 4 o'clock while in self-pity. 4.30. Stare into <laughs> the abyss. 5 o'clock. Solve world hunger. Tell no one. 5.30? Jazzercise. All right, that's enough. Yeah, I was going to say. All right, you missed the slowly slip into madness. That's later. Oh, yeah, bestie. you're right. Okay. If anyone knows, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's his whole day. He's mm-hmm. a busy man with mm-hmm. lots of red meat, lots of walking, lots of steroids. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, you got to respect his grind to some degree. He yeah. does. He has committed to the life. I mean, the dude's the active as fuck. I wish I was even a quarter as active. Yeah. I was like a tenth of that active. <laughs> completely, completely honest with you. Seriously. Um, so yeah, he was back into a corner. Had to apologize to his primals. Very mm-hmm. sad. Very sad. Yeah. Shall we watch the apology? Yeah, let's watch some of the apology. Primals, I'm making this video to apologize <laughs> because I fucked up. <laughs> because I'm embarrassed and ashamed. Because I lied. <laughs> and I misled a lot. <laughs> This is a complicated as fuck topic, at least to me it is, because before social media, I was rich and anonymous, and after social media, I'm still rich, but no longer (laughs) anonymous, and I never expected this kind of exposure in the public eye. I'm rich. Just (laughs) want to flex on you guys for a sec. You couldn't even put on a shirt for your apology. No. I did it wrong. Be off brand. I'm here now to set the record straight. Yes, I've done steroids, and yes, I'm on steroids, (laughs) monitored and managed by a trained hormone clinician. Liver King, the public figure, was an experiment to spread the message, to bring awareness to the 4,000 people a day who kill themselves, the 80,000 people Ugh, a day that damn, try to such kill a bad themselves. Luck. Our people are hurting at record rates with depression, autoimmune, anxiety, infertility. Dude, low shut the fuck life. up. That's why you had to are lie. You right. the most, feeling lost, weak, and submissive. So I made it my job. To I lied to help speech, poor people. A solution called ancestral living, the nine ancestral tenants. Save so our lives. people no longer have to suffer. So we can collectively express our highest and most dominant form. Look at those this abs. is my fight. This that is looks fake, dude. I, I don't exist. know. I'm here to help all the hurt people. Anyway, that's enough of his ass. Wait, 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 wait. There's one more part. I've always said no. I don't touch this stuff. Not going to touch this stuff. Never touch this stuff. That was a lie. <laughs> I've convinced myself that this had nothing to do with the ancestral message. I convinced myself that I'm not a competitive athlete of any kind. So who the fuck am I cheating? I convinced myself. Literally everyone that, that has bought your products. So bad. More, more important conversation. 
I convinced myself that this would overshadow the 36 years of working out, usually twice a day, without... See, he's trying to do, like, major damage control here. Yeah. I convinced myself that this was the vocal minority, usually in the fitness category, Ugh. driving to an unproductive yeah. conversation. Bullshit. Shut and I up. convinced myself that this would be the wrong message to send to the 15-year-old boys. Well, now so you're really sending a wrong message, Dougie. Yeah. I myself into a bigger and deeper hole. Yeah. yeah Dude, dumbass. shut the fuck up. That makes no sense. You aren't actually, like, it's actually worse for these 15 year old boys to be under the impression that they can achieve that without steroids. Exactly. And now knowing that they can't, that they have to, you know, the, right. the, essentially, like, to be look like him, right. they mm -hmm. can't do it all natty. Such a damaging message overall. And, God, one of the worst apologies I've ever Horrible. seen, I think. Like, hey I guys, I'm, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> really, really bad. I mean, Oh, yeah. I don't even know. Like, for him to really go there and say, like, bring out a suicide statistic. Yeah, and be like, that's the reason why I was lying was to save people from committing suicide. Bro, yeah. shut I'm the fuck up. I'm here to help up. all you the hurt people dumbass. out there. Mm, okay. That is literally the worst apology that's ever yeah. been apologized. I, I honestly, <laughs> I'm trying to think of all the other bad apologies that we've seen over the years. That is probably one of the worst. Yeah, not Probably great. one of the worst. Um. So obviously he's he's pretty embarrassed, but he must have known that this could have happened. I wonder if he's kind of had it in his mind. Like I might get found out one day for the steroids. I mean, it's a big part of his whole thing, and he's just going around telling this lie all the time. It's got to hit him. Like, what if I get busted? What if someone finds out? Know. What if someone he's finds my emails? God, right. he listed them all out on an email. Stupid. What a bed dipshit! Like, what are you thinking? I know. I I don't know. I feel like he thought he was never gonna get caught, but he's well, caught he's now. Stupid then, because wow. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Do you think that if he didn't have all these businesses and the, if, if it wasn't if he wasn't like promoting his businesses and stuff, do you think this would still do you think this would be as severe as it is now? No, I be think this. Yeah, I mean, in that case, it would just be like a shitty lie and you'd look like a dumbass. Mm -hmm. But yeah. at least you didn't like mislead people financially. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. now people are questioning, can he be sued? Because and like we heard in that other statement, he said this that question is has been a thing. huge part of my brand and building it is people asking me if I'm on steroids because then I'm able to say no, right. which is a lie. So you're just admitting that this giant lie is what your company is built on. Yeah. And you're telling people if they take this, you could look like me. If you live like me mm -hmm. and you take these things because you, you probably don't have access to a private chef and right. a fucking raw like meat, this, right. and, you know, but if you take my pills, right. you could have a little slice of this. Mm -hmm. exactly. So yeah, it's extremely misleading and honestly, the whole thing I think is just hilarious. Me too. Like, wow, you really built you just this like such all a dumb on a ass, lie, dude. The dumb confidence. Ass. It's the confidence in the lie and going around all these people and fighting back. On Joe Rogan, called him out. And I mean, the amount of podcasts he's gone and been straight up and like, no, I love that yeah. question. No, never touched the stuff. Never gone near it. And not gonna lie, as a person who doesn't know much about steroids and whatever, when he was on H three. I thought I was like maybe he's really he lives this lifestyle and I kind of was like a little intrigued. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I thought maybe wow. I mean he lives so differently than everyone else. That's his whole thing. Is I I'm doing something that really no one else is doing. Yeah. Well, not many people. I'm sure there's other people in the world, but mm -hmm. um, and that's why I'm able to get this. And obviously I don't know that much about what's attainable with and without steroids, but I kind of believed him. Well, not it's not even yes he's on steroids, but the amount. He of steroids. Yes. He, it's not like oh, he's taking like tons of people no. take steroids. Yeah, the amount he's taking mm -hmm. is ridiculous. Yeah, he's on so so much to be then turning around and being like, "This is all natural, baby." I know it's just, and I guess I mean most people. It seems like in the fitness world who actually understand this like, stuff. No shit. Yeah, we're like, no way. There's just no way. But then there are people in the in the fitness and nutrition world yeah. who have been like backing him up, right? And saying, no, he's you know he's the real deal. So they feel like fucking dumbasses. Yeah, now. seriously. So this kind of brings us to our next thing here of like, okay, so he's come out with this mm -hmm. big lie. Could he be sued? So this dude, now you guys probably, I feel like some of you are familiar, this guy named David, he's a lawyer. He's on TikTok. He's the one that like interviews people who he has represented and then ends his videos with like, let's go. Oh <laughs> like, yeah, that, that guy. guy. What's it called? PNP. Yeah, PNP. Mm -hmm. um, he's funny. He's so funny. But anyways, he went on H3 recently and talked about like, okay, 
could he get in trouble? And yeah. he says that likely nothing criminal would ever happen to Liver mm-hmm. King, but there could be a class action lawsuit against him and punitive damages. Mm-hmm. Um, and that he wouldn't be surprised if he went bankrupt from this. So that's interesting. He really thinks he'll go bankrupt. He said he was like, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know if it happened. He's super but. wealthy even going into this. He doesn't seem concerned. Well, I wonder how exposed. That's true. I wonder how this will impact like just his following and if he will still have like a decent amount of people that still think, oh, well, that aside, right. you're still a badass. You still like his Probably. workout routines and everything. But I feel like it has damaged him forever in the sense of like, you also look like this because you take steroids. Like mm-hmm. stop taking steroids and wait a year and then see what you look like. Yeah. And he's just known as a giant liar now. Right. So like, yeah. what is, yeah, I don't know. That's really interesting. I wonder if, yeah, if he'll really suffer financially or how much the companies will be impacted. I'm, I'm assuming a lot. I would assume a lot. God, I wonder how many people out there are on all these fucking supplements thinking they're going to end oh, up like, like they're what? like, where's my results? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Liver King. It's really such an interesting story. I mean, I've never seen someone so ballsy with their lie on social media like that to build your whole brand on a lie. Kind of stupid. Fucking wild. Yeah. Pretty stupid to do, honestly. Because now yep. you look like a dumbass. <laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 Pretty so anyways, interesting. We'll see what happens. I kind of want him to like, he posted his apology video and then I don't think he's done anything. He's like, kind of quieted down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's kind of um, going to let that oh, liver sh- simmer. Shit. Supplements are expensive. Are they really? Yeah. Like the whole pack, like the full pack is $470 if you want everything, like the full stack. I wonder how that compares to other supplements. I don't know anything about it. I wonder if that's, yeah, yeah, maybe. A full, so that's like one month worth? Or, yeah, probably. I bet it's like a 30 day supply or something like that. Yeah, it's a 30 day supply. Wow. But this is like everything that they have, basically. So if you want to be like liver, you got to have it all. Like his Ignite, what's his, scroll down. Uh, fifty-four dollars for it's metabolism for metabolism for metabolism. Okay, I, I don't know what that. I mean, I don't know. I'm not into the supplements, so I don't know like what the average cost is. That makes me think it's probably roughly average. Yeah, is that Queen one marketed to women? Yeah, it's the ultimate female stack for hormone optimization and performance. Sexy. Oh, I want to see what's in. <laughs> Sexy. Hell, you're a baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, who knows? I have a feeling that his business is going to be real. How interesting. He's like a real fraudster. This is like, (laughs) honestly, a true crime. (laughs) This is a true crime. It really could be. I mean, he's like a fraud up there with like Elizabeth Holmes. and. I mean, I I think so. I think he's a big, I mean, well, maybe not Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. (laughs) I'm like, whoa. But he's he's a fraud. Yeah, he definitely is in that category. Yeah, I agree. So we'll see what happens to his ass. I don't know. Yeah, we will update you guys if anything else interesting happens with this story. But yeah, we thought it was pretty Pretty entertaining. I mean, he's entertaining as fuck. Last night I was just yeah watching all these, and it's just like I weirdly could listen to him for like hours. Just the shit he's talking about. I'm just like you are captivating. Yeah, he's a great story. He says it with such confidence that you like believe what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Wild man. Yeah, it's wild. It's the most festive time of the year, and HelloFresh is here to help you make the most of every moment. From holiday hosting to dinners during busy weeknights, you can count on HelloFresh to deliver fresh ingredients and seasonal recipes. One of my favorite things about HelloFresh is how much variety they have. They have over 35 recipes available to choose from each week. There's always something to please everyone. Choose from family-friendly, fit and wholesome, or even veggie meals. Plus, you can easily customize your meals by swapping proteins or sides, upgrading your proteins, or even adding a protein to a veggie meal. And whether you're hosting a holiday party or just stocking up on snacks, you'll find everything you need at the HelloFresh market. From quick breakfast to charcuterie boards and desserts, it's never been easier to prep for a party or fill your pantry. Recently, John and I made salmon limon over herbed couscous with zucchini and tomato. Oh my God, it was so freaking delicious. And there's nothing that I hate more then getting home from work, being starving, but not knowing what to cook for dinner. And that is why I love HelloFresh because all I have to do is go into my fridge, pick out a meal that I want to cook, and it's ready in no time. So go to hellofresh.com slash sesh18 and use code sesh18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. Guys, this is such a good deal. You got to check it out. Go to hellofresh.com slash sesh18 and use code sesh18 for 18 free meals plus free shipping. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. 
All right. So, okay. Unfortunately, we kind of got to switch gears here to more serious topics. Um, honestly, the rest of the show is kind of a bummer, but we need to talk about it. Um, dude, because yeah, this what is the hell is insane. going on. I don't know. This is fucking nuts. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this whole Balenciaga thing. Maybe you don't know all of the details. We're going to get into a lot of that here, but I honestly feel like there hasn't been that much coverage of this. I don't feel like either. Yeah. Um, which is really weird. It makes you think of why that is. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, Balenciaga, this all started. Well, I guess it goes back, you know, the backstory before this, but this campaign Mm -hmm. For this 2022 gift collection was revealed on November 16th. And this campaign was titled Balenciaga Gift Shop. This campaign was launched in support of its spring and summer collection of 2023 Mm -hmm. that launched November 3rd. And the gift collection campaign features children holding these teddy bears in bondage harnesses and costumes now we don't want to show the full images although you can very easily find them they are all over the internet Mm -hmm. Um, but we wanted to show you at least the bears yeah just so you can kind of get an idea Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. basically the bears have bondage harnesses on and clearly they're not marketed for children so why the fuck are children involved in this shoot to begin with that's Mm -hmm. kind of the top question which it's also like why put these bears in these costumes either because i feel like bears are generally associated with children totally it's just like this innocence meets right the whole thing yeah. is so fucking weird makes no sense there's it's no disgusting. like disgusting doesn't seem like there would be any Rhyme logical reason. reason to Mm-mm. put all these factors together to make this and also where are these kids parents that they're letting that's them what be i'm part of saying this dude shoot? what the fuck where Absolutely are your insane. parents? Absolutely insane. They were probably you know, there on set yeah, watching this. Someone over 18, I think, you can't just like drop your five-year-old off at a Balenciaga shoot. Mm-hmm. Someone's got to be there with them. It's totally. But they're probably getting scary. paid, so. Yep. That's what some parents, that's all they care about. So this campaign was shot by photographer Gabriel Gallenberti, which I believe is his last name. Mm-hmm. Um, And he actually put out a statement saying, I am not in a position to comment on Balenciaga's choices, but I must stress that I was not entitled in whatsoever manner to neither choose the products nor the models nor the combination of the same. So basically saying, I'm just here. I take pictures. I was taking pictures. Yeah. Okay. So after obviously this comes out, people are fucking livid and like appalled by what the hell is going on. So Balenciaga comes out and makes a statement apologizing. They say, quote, we're sincerely, sincerely apologize for any offense our holiday campaign may have caused. Our plush bear bag should not have been featured with children in this campaign. We have removed the campaign from all platforms. That's such a weak way of saying all of that. Well, how how come you're not acknowledging that, what a terrible choice yeah. this was? We're sorry about this disgusting imagery. What I mean... This is so like, oh, we are sorry for that if some of you were offended. Right. Yeah, they say that the ad campaign resulted from grievous errors and has insisted that they stand for child safety and well being and that the Balenciaga fuck up. strongly condemns abuse of child in any form, children in any form. Mm-hmm. So you think it's bad. Well, it gets worse. Yeah, much worse. Soon after their first apology from the holiday campaign, photographs from the Balenciaga uh adidas they did like a collab yeah Yeah, i guess they campaign um started to resurface now this was previous but it started to really catch attention because one of the photographs promotes the balenciaga campaign shows the collaboration of a handbag sitting on top of a stack of papers Mm -hmm. of what appear to be documents from the supreme supreme court case united states versus williams which is a ruling that upheld the PROTECT Act. And the PROTECT Act is basically mm-hmm. it increased federal protections against child P world. Yeah, I don't even know how you say that. Yeah. But so if you were looking at this picture, it's this handbag that's on top of a stack of papers. And there's part of this um, paragraph on this paper that you can see is from that uh, lawsuit mm-hmm. or c- su- current Supreme Court case. 
which this, in my opinion, is even worse than the bears. I mean, obviously, it's terrible to have children, but this is just so seems purposely totally. Placed. And I think, I mean, they've tried to make it sound like they just got some random text and it, they didn't didn't know that that was the random text. Like, why the fuck do you have this printed? No, come on. No one shoot. believes that. No. no one believes that this was totally purposely put in there. And to to act like it's some type of accident and oversight is just absurd, honestly. Like, how do you think you're going to get away with that? No one believes you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so, of course, they hop on and try to apologize again. They yeah. say, we apologize for displaying unsettling documents in our campaign. We unsettling take this Unsettling documents? Unsettling Ugh. documents. In our campaign, we take this matter very seriously and are taking legal action against the parties responsible for creating the set and including unapproved items uh, for our spring 23 campaign photo shoot. We strongly condemn abuse of children in any form. We stand for children's safety and well-being. They claim that they were not involved with putting the documents on the table and they said that they were supplied by a third party and were used earlier in a TV drama. Mm, no one believes that. That's that's a load okay, of bullshit. Even if that's true that they were supplied by a third party, you fucks are the ones that mm -hmm. sign this off at the end yeah. of the day. This is Balenciaga. Like, are you kidding me to try and mm -hmm. throw the blame on all these like other yeah. third party companies right. that you're using? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, it's your name. It's your brand. Yeah. And don't try and tell me that this was put out publicly without you guys signing off on that like yeah, what the no fuck are you way. talking about i mean this must have gone through multiple people before it was actually put to press you right. know yeah so they file a 25 million dollar lawsuit against north six which is the production company behind the campaign as well as the set designer for the shoot uh nicholas jardin so they claim that the production company provided the unapproved props again it doesn't even fucking matter if the production company was the one that provided these documents like mm -mm. you guys are the ones that signed off on it at the end of the day so fucking stupid then there's also these photographs from a campaign that they i guess didn't end up using um, i'm not sure the details on this but it shows a book from a belgian artist whose artwork also includes depictions of castrated toddlers what the fuck literally standing in blood we can't show this on the screen but i wanted to show janelle here um it's like stuff like this this is like the minimal of it but Ew. kids covered in blood i mean really freaky fucking absurd stuff um this was a scrap thing that they decided not to use yeah but, but it's like how does, why are you using it exactly, at all exactly exactly and weirdos. how do you have this many mistakes right and, Oh, this is all you. I mean, you cannot explain this stuff away. You've done way too much at this point. It's very obvious mm -hmm. the type of people that are involved with Balenciaga are very, very bad, very just disgusting humans, yeah. honestly. Well, they're just trying to blame all these other people, like yeah. the um, North Six production company. And they actually said that they had no creative control or input during the shoot and that Balenciaga re representatives were present during the shoot and post-production. Yeah, stuff like this. Ew, yeah. Toddlers with their, like, yeah. castor. I mean, it's fucking sick. That's disgusting. I don't Borman. want to see that. Borman's the artist. Look at this fucking guy. Ew. Okay, so obviously so his we're books not in the background. The I mean, come on. This is so purposeful. Mm -hmm. How sick could you... Got caught approve this you fucking morons like because this is i think it's, it's a little like it's a thrill i think they like doing stuff like this trying to be edgy there are so you know? many other ways to be edgy and thrilling other than adding child well i think some of these people are actually involved in some of this shit you know there's there's a lot i mean i have to be careful about what yeah, we say allegedly. here on youtube um but I mean, in my opinion, I think these people have a lot of people within this company have ties to this type of stuff. And it's like a thrill to put it out there and to try not to get caught because I don't I can't understand this any other fucking way this many times. No, I know. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. It's disgusting. It's I know so it's, it's horrific. Weird. It's very upsetting. Um, <sighs> God. So. Uh, obviously, now lots of other people are apologizing as well, including the creative director for Balenciaga, uh, Demna, I believe is the name. The yeah. person says, I want to personally apologize for the wrong artistic choice of my concept for the gifting campaign with the kids, and I take responsibility. It was inappropriate to have kids promote objects that had nothing to do with them. As much as I would sometimes like to provoke a thought through my work, I would never have an intention to do that with 
such an awful subject as child abuse that I condemn. I don't believe any of his words. He I think says he totally purposely did all of this. Totally. And that there's there's the meaning fuck behind are you it. Talking about, dude, you didn't realize it. You just forgot that mm-hmm. that's like disgusting. Mm-hmm. You freak. Uh, he says that he's working with child protection organizations moving forward. <laughs> Fucking disgusting. What a weak ass statement. Why does it all have to do with babies and kids? Why do you think? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, because this stuff runs deep in the elite circles and in high fashion and the wealthy. I mean, it just does. I think most people understand that. Sick. So fucking weird. I know. The whole thing is so. Yeah, I mean, absolutely horrific. It's just amazing that they're like trying to. uh, God, even point fingers at each other. Yeah, it's like it's like that one meme of all the what are you doing? Spider Man pointing fingers at each other. Yeah. Uh, while Balenciaga is apparently no longer pursuing legal action against North Six. Yeah, they dropped that. Why do you think? Yeah. They said they will implement new internal policies to evaluate the nature of its context. Shut up. You guys are done. Can they ever come back as a brand after this? Probably. I, oh, I think so. If that is real, Oh, my God. I well, can't even are, imagine that. If people are going to still... I don't think celebrities will wear this brand for a very long time. But yeah, you're you're probably right that eventually they will bounce back. I think back. they'll bounce back. And especially if like, the media is not really disgusting. talking about it. And like, I mean, it's kind of being buried in the media. So like totally. it is being buried by the media for sure. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I found um, the um, the photographer Gabriel mm-hmm. and he has this um, on his projects. He has this camp, not campaign, but it's I guess it's just a project um, where he features kids it's from like Toy Stories, right? Yep, it's called Toy Stories. So, I mean, from first glance, these look like fairly innocent images. Yeah. Right, and that, yeah, these look like fairly innocent, but it's just interesting that this guy also has a connection with kids. Well, yeah, and, and they're standing very similar to the way that the kids were in the other photos. Like, No, yeah, they are. It's almost like he kind of specializes in this style. Was he sought out because he's good at taking pictures of children? Like, Yeah, it's just really, it's, it's eerie. It's weird. It's, it is very eerie. It's like, it's all so connected and so, uh, there's no way nobody knew about this. There's no, I mean, so many no, things that. No, absolutely not. I don't luckily, think anyone like believes this, that. Luckily, like this, the photos that I'm seeing are, you know, I don't see anything they're wrong with them. They're relatively innocent. Yeah, yeah, they're innocent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it is very weird how. Well, I'm, I'm thinking like maybe he was sought out for this campaign right. because they were going to have children. Sure. In it. Well, it's just where that like all these people that are connected to this campaign specifically have weird connections to kids and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this one is probably the most innocent one we've seen out of the ones that we've talked about. Yeah. But still really interesting. Yeah, it's just so fucked up. Um, What's also absolutely disgusting. Okay, so shortly after Balenciaga's president and CEO also posted on Instagram, we'll read a few of their points here. Their thing is kind of long, but they say... Balenciaga takes the following actions with the objective to learn from our mistakes as an organization. They say new control instances, our current process for content validation has failed, and we recognize the need to do better. On the internal side, we will nominate with immediate effect an image board responsible for evaluating the nature of our content from concept to final assets, including legal, sustainability, and diversity expertise. On the external side, we have appointed a best-in-class agency to assess and evaluate our content. They have, you know, a bunch of things that we have set aside a significant fund for grants to organizations so that we can help make a difference in protecting children. Shut up. Uh, They say we want to personally reiterate my sincere apologies from the offense caused and take uh, my responsibility at Balenciaga. We stand together for children's safety and do not tolerate any kind of violence and hate hated message. Okay, maybe if this was just the kids with the bears we could see this as like okay really bad taste big yeah. mistake stupid as fuck but all these other things totally. like there's something going on with this brand 1000 percent. the people that are behind it this is purposeful i do not believe for a second that this was just some like creative mistake that happened to make it out shut up it's almost offensive that they're trying to make excuses for it right. because we all know what we're seeing here well, and they, of just, course they have to <laughs> yeah, of course, but it looks stupid as hell. Oh, it looks They should so be like, stupid. we're shutting our whole brand down and we're ashamed. Goodbye. That should be the <laughs> they would never do that. They're, you know, a huge fashion brand. They're never going to do that. <sighs> so this is where we t- are going to talk about Kim K for a second, because obviously she has worked with the Balenciaga a ton and throughout I her career. Recently more so than in the past, right? Yeah. Like she had this like big deal with them this last I year, think so. right? 
uh, I would assume so. she was planning to work with them. I know for sure in 2023, um, she's since decided not to do that. Um, I remember there was some big campaign that she did with them this year. That I, was like she was going to be like kind of a face of Balenciaga. Could it be was like some big deal. I mean, huge financial deal as well. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely made some money off it. But yep. the thing that's an issue is that a week and a half mm-hmm. after this initial bear picture thing came out is when she decides to speak up. She yeah. took a week and a half and said nothing when <laughs> she has been rocking Balenciaga for a long time. Mm-hmm. She says on Twitter, I've been quiet for the past few days, not because I haven't been disgusted and outraged by the recent Balenciaga campaign, but because I wanted an opportunity to speak to their team to understand for myself how this could have happened. As a mother of four, I've been shaken by the disturbing images. The safety of children must be held with the highest regard and any attempts to normalize child abuse of any kind should have no place in our society, period. I appreciate Balenciaga's removal of the campaign and apology. In speaking with them, I believe they understand the seriousness of the issue and will take the necessary measures for this to never happen again. As for my future with Balenciaga, I am currently reevaluating my relationship with the brand, basing it off their willingness to accept accountability for something that should have never happened to begin with and the actions I am expecting to see them take to protect children. Again, if it was just the bear photo shoot, if that was the only thing, maybe this apology would make any fucking sense. But the fact that you say reevaluating your relationship, are you kidding me? You just cut that shit Are off. you kidding me? That's... That's disgusting. Like, Which, you don't have enough money. That is one of the most say. greedy moves I've ever seen. That's what doesn't make sense is, like, you don't need them. They it need is bad you. for your career. Right. Too. Just from, like, a business standpoint. Totally. This is stupid. And to take so long because you have to talk to them, call them up, talk to them for an hour, and then get on this immediately. This is not something you just wait on. Right. And, I mean, at least... Not to give, you know, her credit, but, like, you have to give her some credit for being one of the only people... One of the only to people. ...to stand up and say something... Given she does have these huge campaigns, she's probably if there's one face of Balenciaga, it's, it's probably Kim. Kim. But there's other people too, like um, I know Cardi B has tons posted of pe- like tons, tons of, of people, celebrities mm-hmm, work with work with Balenciaga, them and represent them, and they're, and they're all not saying shit. Real fucking quiet. Interesting how that works. Yeah. Uh, TMZ did report that she apparently pulled out of a campaign she was going to do in 2023. Like I said, with the brand, even before she made her public statement. Um, she also apparently has plans to wear Balen- or had plans to wear Balenciaga in an upcoming event, but has since de- decided that she would be working with other brands. <laughs> mm. And TMZ claims that she has no plans to work with Balenciaga in the future. So it kind of sounds like they're making it seem like she's and she should done with have them. said that totally. she should have really taken a stance at this. This was such a good opportunity for her to really show people yeah. that at the end of the day, it's morals over money. And she tries to like sometimes act like mm-hmm. that's how she is, but mm-hmm. then. This is such a clear representation that she is not at all above things like this. And to just say, why wouldn't you have just said, and I am completely done with this company. I am horrified. I'm disgusted. There are no words, you know, and I never want anything to do with them ever again. That would have been a good response to this. But and I mean, Kim has had some gnarly takes over the years some bad moves. But this is, I think. One of the worst, if not the worst move she's ever made. Pretty stupid. Yeah. Pretty fucking stupid. Very stupid. Yeah. I don't know, dude. This is pretty fucking horrible. Yeah, it really is. Um, Yeah. I just really have no respect for her now. That's absolutely shocking that she would do that, to be honest. I mean, I don't know. Maybe she didn't understand like the other stuff. Like, I just don't understand how you could even say you're considering reevaluating my relationship. I mean, what? What? Based on their willingness to accept account. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This wasn't a mistake. That's no. what's, what's driving me nuts. Like you this said, is not a mistake. If it was the one-off weird bear shit, still fucking horrible, yes. still disgusting, no excuse. Of course. But it makes it a thousand times worse when there's been like yeah. f- a bunch of this other instances. This is purposeful versus a yeah. distasteful one-off mistake. Mm-hmm. This is who these people fucking are. Yeah, it's horrible. And they're like flaunting it out in a non in a God, I really have no words. It's so horrific. It's fucking insane. I just, yeah. So I wonder like what this is going to look like for them going forward. I really do. I don't think they're going to be canceled though. I really don't. Did you see Kanye was wearing it too? Like right after this happened, he was wearing Balenciaga, some fucking thing. Really? Yeah. Jesus. Great. That's great. Yep. So yeah, which brings us to the next person we have to talk about. Wait, real quick. I was just searching Balenciaga on Google to see if anything popped up. 
Um, apparently, a banner that says pedophiles was hung over the entrance of the Texas Balenciaga store. Oh, like by a protester? By someone, yeah. Oh, I thought they did that. Like, and, oh, my say, God. They're, they're really being out with it. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, they have, people have been protesting at a bunch of locations. Like, I don't know. I hope this really, like, tanks the brand. I know that's wishful thinking, and you're probably right. Dude, their right. shit's ugly as fuck, too. <laughs> so oh, I yeah. know. Oh, my God. That what recent that? photo shoot that was, or the... Uh, fashion, fashion show, show that was like in, in the, the mud. mud and then all those people were like recreating tiktoks of yeah. like people walking in trash bags i was dying laughing it's so funny it literally looked like hell on earth like what a set it's like they were trying to uh, see and that's like what makes me i just think they're a nasty nasty company with bad people behind them yeah it's just weird because like i feel like you can find so many like subliminal messages in their campaigns now i don't know can i see the bigger picture yeah i wonder if people will look back at past campaigns and see if there's anything else dig up more stuff yeah. on them yeah like by now someone probably would have probably but maybe they did i mean i know that there are people that are finding out information about tons of people that work there and some of their top people and it is pretty gnarly stuff mm -hmm. um, unconfirmed so don't want to get in any trouble here again yeah but yeah i'm all just kind of speculating here yeah. at this point yeah but anyway stupid. um we will also keep you guys up to date on that story if anything else comes out of it which i'm sure there'll be something at some point we all know that the holidays are here and with them has come a lot of chaos for many people. And I am definitely one of those people. I'm having a lot of seasonal excitement, but also some seasonal dread and seasonal anxiety. And I know other small businesses out there can relate. Maybe you're slaying through traffic to the post office. Maybe your inbox is looking more like a blizzard than a winter wonderland. Are you rushing to send cards and gifts to your loyal clients? Well, Stamps.com can make it all so much easier for you because Stamps.com is the one-stop shop for all your shipping and mailing needs. And for more than over 20 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over a million businesses. You can get access to the USPS and UPS services that you need to run your business right from your computer with no lines, no traffic, no hassle. And we all love that. You can even save money with major discounts on USPS and UPS shipping rates. They give them good deals because Stamps.com brings them so much business and you can save up to 86% off. It's really a stress-free solution for every small business. You can use Stamps.com to print postage wherever you do business. All you need is a computer and a printer. It could not be easier. And if you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your stamps.com dashboard. So this holiday season, trade late nights for silent nights and get started with stamps.com today. Sign up with promo code SESH for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage and a free digital scale. Plus there are no long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter code SESH. Kanye West. Dude, oh my God, this is just... <sighs> exhausting this guy is you know for all the people that were in a conservatorship like britney spears this motherfucker should be in a conservatorship in my opinion mm -hmm. like what the hell is going on yeah you're saying like people who actually sh probably should be yeah yeah i feel like if he was a woman he'd be in a conservatorship yeah i agree with that because be. recently he's been really saying the most wild shit i have heard in a long time mm -hmm. even for him Mm -hmm. really tops like everything ever first like, just, off, like the worst i've ever heard anyone ever say i mean a long yeah mm. in modern times in mo yeah i was gonna say in modern times yeah uh first off this was a few weeks back but just a side note he was suspended on twitter for posting a swastika mm -hmm. now it has always been kind of talked about that kanye has some anti-semitic views um yeah and to clarify he this was his second suspension from twitter yeah. he was suspended a while ago we talked about it when he said death con death three, con three to all Jews. Jews yeah so he was suspended after that then Elon fucking genius brings him back and Connie gets you know post the swastika and yeah gone. so now he's gone again um very stupid so then moving forward here on November 22nd Kanye and Trump met up mar lago to have dinner but it wasn't just the two of them Kanye brought along Nick Fuentes and this motherfucker is a white nationalist holocaust denying Freak. Freak. Disgusting. Yeah. He is a fucking like, abhorrent, just uh he's disgusting a human. Freak. So the three of them had a nice little meal together. <laughs> Can you imagine the things that were said behind oh, closed doors my with God, those? I literally three? don't even want to know. Holy fuck. I don't even want to know. 
And then on December 1st, Kanye went on the Alex Jones talk show Infowars mm -hmm. and said some of the craziest shit I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. I mean, crazy beyond what Alex Jones is willing to say. Literally. I mean, Alex was it made like Alex look sane. Yeah, yeah. he did. Yeah, yeah he for really real. did. He was like trying to save him several times in the conversation, and it just, oh, oh my god! I'm sure a lot of you have seen these clips. I've, they've gone like fairly viral. Yeah. Um, we don't want to, you know, Play push them. them out any further on our behalf. Yeah. Like, just don't need that. Um, if you want to see them, you can see them. They're they're out there. Just literally, look it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at one point in the conversation, Alex Jones states. Quote, you're not Hitler, you're not a Nazi, you don't deserve to be called that and demonized. And Kanye replies, well, I see good things about Hitler also. I love everyone. And that well, he had a big pause there. He responds to, you're not a Nazi. He goes, well, well and then it's just like, what? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's trying to pull this whole, I am Jesus-like and I love, I love everyone. That's what um, Christians do. Yeah. Dude, you are so, so off. He says, quote, every human being has something of value that they brought to the table, especially Hitler. Also, Hitler was born Christian. And then God, Alex Jones so told Kanye he had a, he was kind of like, bro, you have like a Hitler fetish. And which Kanye responds, I like Hitler. Mm -hmm. And Alex did try to say to him like, oh, I think you just like the outfits. They, you know, yeah, right, his, right. his whole like, his fashion sense that Hitler had. And he was like, no, no, I like Hitler. Mm -hmm. He just like really dug into the ground with who he is, which I guess for a long time, it's been kind of going yeah. around that he maybe Kanye has static. this whole Hitler ideation. Like he loves, has loved Hitler and what the Nazis did for a long time and sees Hitler as this big genius. And that's kind of always been Kanye's thing is his obsession with these special humans these geniuses he always talks about steve jobs and he thinks he is a steve jobs he thinks he's right up there with walt disney and mm -hmm. i mean he, there's clips of him saying this all mm -hmm. over the place so mm -hmm. he clearly thinks hitler is one of those people that he and has made it now clear what people have thought for a long time that he idolizes hitler how insane in 2022 fuck kanye west what the fuck he also says he does not like the word evil next to Nazis. He loves Jewish people. This is literally a quote. I love Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. You, okay. He's, I mean, wow. Wow. What so many the things. fuck? So Dude, many this things. is the craziest shit I have heard in a long time. Yeah, it's like, absolutely horrific. It's so upsetting and offensive. And, oh my God. I mean, to say, I don't want the word evil next to Nazis. What else? I mean, the Nazis are the definition of, of evil. evil. What are you talking the, about, bro? Oh, my God. The fact that... It's and like, Hitler? Ugh. The epitome of evil, literally. Burning people alive, whole families in gas chambers, doing horrible experiments on people of all ages. I mean, just sick, sick shit. Some of the most evil things, the most evil thing to ever happen probably on planet Earth, as far as we know. And he's literally and says, he's like, I love fine. Jewish people, but I also love Nazis. And Alex Jones literally responds, kind of like laughs awkwardly and is like, well, I have to disagree with that. Is he trying to just be different to be like, I am just that person that sees love in yeah. everyone. Well, and I, I think he's like, whole thing is like he's a Christian and Christians love everyone, mm -hmm. even the Nazis. Because that's, I mean, Jesus would wash the feet of prostitutes, right? That was like the whole thing. He was loved everybody, no matter your history or whatever. And yeah, he's totally trying to embody that. And it's just... I, I don't know. When it comes to Kanye, I'm losing words. I don't know what to even make of him nowadays. I mean, we've always talked, you know, Kanye has mental health issues and we've always oh, brought that up yeah. when we bring him up. But it's like now it's way beyond that. Um, yeah, there's no like. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's, he's been doing true colors shit for a long for time. Yeah, this is fucking absurd. This is like yeah. the I literally I keep saying it, but it's true. I cannot believe this is happening in 2023 yeah. that Kanye West is running around saying that he loves right? Hitler and loves Nazis. And I think most people would agree that throughout he's had one of the most successful careers. He's he Li was very talented. I mean, his last couple albums, projects, whatever, have been pretty not great dog shit compared to what he used to do, but. He would have gone down as mm -hmm. one of the most talented artists ever to yeah. walk the earth. And now yeah. he's a fucking 
joke. lunatic. And I think like, up until what the this hell is point, going on? people were kind of hanging on to the hope that he's going to get it together and like have some clarity and get help, get the help that he needs yeah, and like, no. you know, rejoin. But I mean, it <laughs> is no over coming back now. He is so, oh yeah, that ship There's has no sailed. Back from this. That was the final. That was the final yeah. straw. When you're on Alex Jones and even Alex Jones is looking like, at you bro. like you're whack, then you really... You whack as hell. He committed career suicide big time in the last, well, the last year, a couple of years, but really in the last few weeks, that's that's the true end. And then I sent you guys this thing. So he was on Instagram last night. I just happened to be um, scrolling and somehow I found this thing like on TMZ or something. He goes on Instagram. Am I the only one who thinks Elon could be half Chinese? Have you ever seen his pics as a child? Take mm. a Chinese genius and mate them with a South African supermodel, and we have an Elon. I say an Elon because they probably made 10 to 30 Elons, and he's the first genetic hybrid that's stuck. Well, let's not forget about Obama. I'm sorry for using curse words in church, but I don't have another word for Obama yet. Yay, 24. Let's unify and find out. What? Wow. Like, wow. what are you talking about, dude? I just don't even... This is just so it's honestly just so sad. And I feel really bad for people who are being affected by all these words. I mean, in so so many what he's saying is offensive to so many different groups of people. Yeah. Like everyone who served in World War Two. Millions of people. Yeah, everyone who I have mean just died. Oh my god. Who killed. It's so it's just like it's not even remotely funny at this point like it's oh, just it's horrible. like what the fuck what the fuck dude i don't even know what to say it's like so shocking and i think it was getting to the point where nothing he could say really shocked me mm -hmm. but this that was shocking this has all been really shocking i kept seeing like oh connie is on info wars being like i love nazis and i was like what really like what did he Maybe really say yeah. like no yeah. literally the clip word for yourself. word and what was he wearing yeah he like was wearing like a weird nurse mask yeah. or something he was showing, he had his whole face covered. And at one point he had like this fucking net. I don't even remember. Dude, I feel bad for his kids. Me I mean, I just, too. This is just horrific. It's so, so Kim filed up. for divorce at the right time. Uh, yeah. Should have probably done that a lot sooner, honestly. <sighs> yeah. Um, I feel really bad for his kids. Yeah. It's really sad. I'm just like, I'm wondering where, where will Kanye end up in five years from now? Like what will, I mean, this is just so huge at this point so fucking bizarre it's really upsetting it's just sad to hear stuff like this even come out of someone's mouth right that's what i'm saying it's like, so dangerous like do you not understand so, the gravity of dude, your words anti-semitism is so high right now yeah. it's like it's really bad and he's had a huge part in that yeah like you are really affecting people on a huge scale here and in he's horrible making it, ways he's making it okay on quote unquote for people to say these things mm -hmm. and it's not okay mm -hmm. this is not okay he's, he's like normalizing more it. misinformation more lies <sighs> yeah it's yeah really i think bad. we're all like, really dangerous speechless. yeah it is it's very scary to think so now i'm like okay <laughs> like you had said i thought like oh, i can't get much worse got way worse he said this and i'm like now what are you about to come out with like what's kanye gonna do next yeah i mean is he mm. that was like some of the craziest shit i could have ever thought someone would have said well, i was gonna say i really time. want this to be the last time we ever talk about him i don't even want to like utter his name again on any of our shows but it's like what if he does something worse and it's like needs to be discussed yeah but well, i feel like I feel at like the same also time we yeah we need to people discuss to it, like but... come out at but i feel like when someone says something like that it's almost necessary for public figures mm -hmm. to come out and be like what the fuck yeah, are you doing to stand up for it in droves yeah and like really make it clear yeah but at the same time i'm like at this point i think he is only going to say things that are worse in order to get that publicity because i've always said Kanye's such a hype addict he's totally. just like wants attention no matter what like whatever he knows what he says is going to be shocking he's that one of those types of people who sees good and bad press is all the same. It's all good to him. Any any attention and media coverage is good. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to keep giving him that. Um, but yeah, I agree. At the same time, it's like we have to stand up to it. We have to discuss it. This yeah. Is, but I really hope that, you know, not even Alex Jones gives him a platform anymore. Like, who is he going to go babble to next? Right. Because I don't even think, I mean, I don't think any of the really even far right shows will even host him anymore yeah, i mean yeah, i know yeah. at some point he was like kind of working with candace owens and like 
I mean, most, I don't know much about her deal right now, but is she, do you think she's ever going to host him or anything not. ever again? That's what I was going to say. No matter what side of the spectrum, right wing, left wing, whatever, yeah. ultra conservative, mm-hmm. for the most part, it's not a good look. And people yeah. know this and agree Yeah, that like Nazis are bad. That's kind of a fucking known fact. Yeah. And no matter what you are politically, for the most part, you agree with that. Obviously, there's fucking extremists like Nick Fuentes and Kanye yeah. and whatever, but... <laughs> Yeah, but even some of those people will try to like, you know, they won't say some of the things they actually think behind closed doors because they know. They know that's a fucking mm -hmm, stupid mm -hmm, ass take. Right. And so will anyone ever host him ever again? Like, I feel like even Alex Jones was sitting there like, like, get this guy off my fucking stage. Dude, watching Alex Jones, he looked so uncomfortable. I was like, damn, for Alex Jones, who's said some fucking ridiculously (laughs) crazy shit. Yeah. (sighs) I can't believe he even has the balls to open his mouth. But Yeah. I don't know who else would even have him on. Like that's let's hope he doesn't get on any other bigger platform ever again. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just running hope he for just, president. Uh, oh my god. So, well, that's not going to happen. Yeah. I don't know. It's all it's just like it's just so sad. I'm sure it's really hurt a lot of people in a in a very deep way. Mm-hmm. I mean, this stuff is just like yeah, like we said, it's like you haven't heard people openly, any, especially someone of like Kanye West saying these types. It just hits differently. It's like, wow. I how guess much it, progress have we actually made? Right, exactly. Like you know that there's people out there who, of course, are hateful bigots. Of course, but it, it's like it's one thing scale. to know that they like think that, but it's another thing to hear someone of that size mm-hmm. with a platform that size come out and just straight up say, "I." like hitler i love yeah. nazis just very like depressing and and horrifying scary honestly fucking so scary the whole thing just really bummed because like crowley said it's making if someone of that size of a following is going to say that it's making it okay it's making people think that it's okay mm. to have these thoughts and these yeah. ideas and these opinions yep, yep. You know, yeah. as before, it's like, well, I may think that, but I can't come out and say that because that's not PC. Yeah. But now, who gives a fuck? Like, you could say whatever you want, apparently. Yeah. Well, I think anyone with a platform will stay away from the type of stuff th- that he's saying. Right. Considering. But I'm just talking about even people like, you know, with no yeah. platform, just oh, people yeah. in no, general who say things the behind fire. closed doors. And now they're like, oh, I can go out and say yep. this in public. Well, it's like, yeah, people it. and say this on online and say mm-hmm. this on, mm-hmm. you know, whatever. And or do think of like people- how many die hard fans out there that just believe anything that he says mm-hmm. actually are going to like take his words seriously and try to although the kanye reddit which has been like oh a, yeah a big active thing for a long time and everyone's there is turned on him too and if they're posting all these you know like informational uh memes i guess you could say about the holocaust and holocaust deny like calling him a denier and which he is, is he's like heading seems that way like, which I mean, it seems like yeah he might already be there Oh, yeah, it's just fucking like crazy. mind-blowing. It really is wild. Absolutely wild. Wow, God, it's so much worse than I ever thought it could be. Just seeing him up there is so shocking. Like, thinking of him 15 years ago and mm-hmm. then now. Wow. Just holy shit. I know. What a weird week or so it's been. A weird November. Dece- Wait. It's December now. Right, but right, all this right. happened in November, right? Yeah. I don't know. I can't keep track of the can't time. Keep track. Shit's just getting wild out there, though. It honestly just freaks me out, puts me in a bad mood. I don't even know how to like wrap the show up from here. This is just so crazy. Crazy shit. Guys, we're on a weird timeline. That's all I know. Seriously. Yeah. So fucking strange. Oh, God. Well, anyways, um, I guess we'll go <laughs> I ahead. We had like a, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, a good hmm, note to end to think here. Of, like, um, positive. Charlie, do you have anything? Oh, I Please. watched some of The Office. Oh, okay, we can end on that. That's nice. <laughs> oh, good. I Thank watched you. two I'm more. Proud of you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I watched the episode where they're having like a fire alarm goes off, and then one of the guys, I forgot his name, the guy with the glasses, he like throws water into the room and then like breaks this glass. Light? Yeah. T- oh, the stress relief episode. I think you so. watched that one. You're well, not the that one. Part not in? the one that's like. Stay calm, everyone. Oh, not, not that, that one. one. No, no, no. It's oh, like this another. other part of this. The fire alarm was there was like smoke in the air. And the you sound like you have off. no idea what you watched, to be honest. <laughs> you guys, it's not getting any better. Are you doing something else while watching it? I'm taking a nap. No, <laughs> it's hard. I'm petting my dogs. I, I mean, was doing Christmas shopping on my computer a little bit, but I was watching it. I mean, 
it, that's all you have notes wise from it is the guy with the glasses. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of giving up on you ever being able to watch this it's show. Not that, it's not getting funnier to me. And I'm on episode like, I think I'm probably like four or five now of season two. When does it get funny? I mean, it's funny now. It should be. It gets a lot better. <laughs> I'd say definitely season three gets a lot better. Um, it's just it's a really like a specific specific type of humor. And it's also old. Like a lot of it wouldn't even fly today. And it's just like, a, true. you know, I don't know. Some people just aren't into it, I guess. Oh, I the one part I did love it. find was funny was when Michael Scott was talking to someone about how he's going to rent out his like extra bedroom to somebody. He's like, I'm doing so-and-so a really big favor. Oh, yeah. By, like, he's like, I'll be charging him 300 bucks. He was like trying to make it sound like he was doing him a big favor and was mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be renting out my room. I thought I chuckled at that part. It yeah. Funny. I mean, it it really does get a lot Michael better Scott from there. Michael Scott has got some funny one-liners, but like overall, the other characters, I'm like, why are you losers? The other characters here? build and, a like, lot. When the- <laughs> you losers even here. <laughs> but this just coming back to me when the firemen like show up mm-hmm. and they're like who started the fire and they're like so and so started the fire oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it does get a lot better <laughs> i really do think it does however it just may not be your sense of humor maybe not which doesn't you just have none time. i don't know mm-hmm. what to tell you yep true <laughs> that <laughs> no sense of humor around here oh boy no honestly i think you have one of the best sense of humors that I know. So that's really? why I'm like Thank shocked you. that you don't like this show. I'm shocked too for myself. Mm. Do you like little, any little sitcom like that? Uh, Sitcom. Is that a sitcom? No. Oh, it's not a sitcom? I was gonna say, I didn't think it counted Maybe as Maybe it sitcom. is. What's the definition of a sitcom? Let's I always see. thought it's like when people clap and it's on a live when audience. people clap! <laughs> a sitcom. What is it? Like a, a, a situation comedy. A situation comedy. So that's kind of what this is. There's situations. It's a genre of, genre of comedy centered on a fixed set of characters who mostly carry over from episode to episode. Yeah, it's so a, yeah, it's a sitcom. sitcom. So it's Schitt's Creek. I love Schitt's Creek. Yeah. I love Will and Grace. What else? I love that 70s show. That's good. Do you like Always Sunny in Philadelphia? I haven't seen that one. Kendall, Kendall, do you like, do one, you like that one? I started. I didn't really like it. But See, I do like that one. I think that one's very I haven't funny. watched enough of it to really give it like a fair opinion. I also just love Danny DeVito. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I watched that one like when it first came out a long time ago, like a couple yeah. episodes and couldn't get into it. So I should give it another shot. <laughs> Danny DeVito. Wait, what was that guy that burned? Bur- <laughs> what? Who? That joke that we had about oh, that one guy. Nicholas bur- Birdcage. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget that moment in my life. That was amazing. Oh, those good times. God, some good times. What game were we Bird playing? Cage? The like lies remember. and the truth. Yeah, that's oh, what it yeah, was. That was cage. fun. We should try that to do that so game again. Fucking funny. Yeah, that was. Bird cage. Mm. Bird cage. <laughs> Maybe we'll get to play some games coming up here. We'll see like how spicy the world continues to be. Bird cage. Oh god. Okay. Well, <laughs> we'll end it off there. Nicholas T. Bird, remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god, it killed Well, me. that was the session. I know we were kind of all over the place oh. this week. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us like always. Go check out our merch. Mm, yes. Yes, 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 yes. And we will see you on the next session. But until then, keep, keep it, it fresh. fresh.